So what we have here is we have a kind of complicated mechanism. At least it was complicated to draw and it's not really a scale, so I apologize for that. But we have a large gear here and a small gear here. And the small gear has a torque or a moment applied to it of 0.8 Newton meters. And then you have this lever device that's pushing this mechanism into the um, a part on the large gear and as a braking mechanism. And so what we need to do is we need to find force F needed to stop this thing from moving, given that it is has this torque applied to it. And right here we have kind of a cross section cut out where it's uh, all shaded in. And so we are going to find what force F is. And that's what we're going over in this video. If you want a video explaining this equation along with um, the frictional forces equation for pivots and discs, you can click on this video link. And if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of understand um, how to find the variables we need to find. So we have our moment here, and it's kind of easy to see that it has to do with this moment applied, but we need to figure out how it kind of transfers from this gear over to this gear, and thus the shaft. And then we also have this force P that we need to find, which is the axial force that is um, causing the normal force that causes friction, and that will be applied here and that will come from our force F, but it's not gonna be the same as F because the length of these parts of the lever are different. Um, and then we have our coefficient of static friction, and the reason why that is static is because we need to find out how much force is needed to stop the whole mechanism, which means that we need to find the static, um, we'll need to, use the coefficient of static friction. So looking at this, to find out what the moment is on this shaft A, given that it's applied this torque of 0.8 Newton meters to this gear, um, we need to think about what a moment is. A moment is a force times by a distance. Well, we have our moment here and if we divide by a distance, we just get a force. And that force is being applied at the very edge of this gear. And that same force that's being applied to the edge of this gear is applying that force to the edge of the big gear. And then the big gear, well, that means it has a force applied to the edge of it. And we have a distance of the diameter or the radius of the gear and so a force times a distance is back to a moment. So that would be the moment about shaft A. So we are going to convert um, all these measurements of millimeters into meters for what we're doing. And so our moment about A is going to be, once again, a force times by a distance, so we have um, first our distance here of 150 millimeters, which is 0 0.15 meters. And then our force, like we said, is what's applied right here, the connection of these two gears. And when we divide um, this moment here by a distance, we get out that force. And so we have the 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.03, which is the radius of that gear. So that gives us our moment. Plug that into your calculator and this uh, moment applied around this gear A is four Newton meters. And so we'll go ahead and just label that right here. This has a four Newton meter torque on it. So now that we've found that, we have 
the m variable in our equation, we are given the coefficient of static friction, the mu, and we have the two radii um, right in here. And so solving this equation for m or for p, plugging all these variables, we have that we have the four newton meters uh, for that moment equals two thirds times by 0.4, which is the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by p, and then our radius two is the bigger radius, and once again, in meters, we're going to convert it to, and so that's 0 0.125 cubed minus the smaller one, which is 100 millimeters, which is 0.1 meters cubed, and then once again on the bottom, just squared. Sorry, that should be squared. And then plugging all that into the calculator and dividing it over the other side by four, so that solves for P, and we get that P equals 88.5. Newtons. So that is the axial force that this mechanism needs to press in right here on this plate um, to be able to get it to stop. But we need to find the force F here. Now these would be the same if these two distances were the same, but they're not. So now we need to find F. And F we can find through some moments about point C here. And so we know that our force P is pushing on the mechanism this way, but because it's all static, we're saying it's not moving at this point, this mechanism is going to be pushing back on this Leverdale this way. So this is going to be our force P, and if we sum moments about point C, we can find F. So we say the sum of moments about point C equals zero. That's because, once again, we're saying that it's in equilibrium. And so we have force P, which is a going to cause a counterclockwise rotation about point C. That is going to be positive for us. multiplied by its distance from C, which is 0 0.2 meters, then minus force F, because it is going to cause counter clockwise rotation about point C, multiplied by its distance from point C, which is 0 0.15 meters. So now, adding this over to the other side, we divide by 0 0.15 on both sides, we can solve for F, and we find that F equals 118 newtons. So that is how hard we need to be pulling up right here perpendicular to this arm at F with a force F of 118 newtons to get this whole mechanism to stop. So it's kind of complicated, but the most difficult parts are just finding out how to um, convert this moment over to this shaft and then figure out how to get F when we find P. But other than that, it's not too difficult. I hope you found it helpful though. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. If you want to buy some merch from Student Engineering, there are some links down in the description to Amazon and Teespring where you can buy some shirts and hoodies, mugs and stickers and stuff with the student engineering logo on it. And buying that helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.